Hey, today we're going to talk about this carburetor right here. I hear a lot of bad mouthing about this NT carburetor, and as far as I'm concerned, it's a pretty decent carburetor. You just have to know how to set it up. A lot of people get their first little motorized bike. One of the first things they notice is one of two things is either A, I got gas coming out of my air filter, which, okay, and uh, I've got gas coming out of the, the primer bulb too, or, you know, combination of the both, or the bike runs like crap because the carburetor isn't fully pushed, pushed in on the, uh, the intake uh, port there, and you just need to push it in, give it a few turns, tighten it up. But, uh, so if you don't understand much about carburetors, let me show you how you can get your NT carburetor running good. And as well, if you're going to modify your bike, you want to put an expansion chamber on it, high compression head, and the like, this is a good carburetor. There are no magical carburetors out there that's going to make your bike just tear ass through the neighborhood. First, you have to learn how to properly jet this bad boy. It comes from the factory a little bit too rich. Uh, there, there's a phenomenon called four-stroking. That's what we call it. You're cruising down your wide open throttle, the bike goes, and then it starts blubbering a little bit. Well, it's a combination of two things. One, it's too rich. Now, your main jet, that handles three-quarters throttle to full throttle, and when you got that thing wide open, you're wanting to go, it's too rich, there's our problem, and it's a matter of balancing in the motor. These things can only go so many RPMs. The crankshafts aren't that well balanced. The bearings aren't that good. And it's, a, you know, it's an inexpensive motor that allows us to have our hobby. So let's go and take a look at the carburetor. Let's demystify it. Come on. Okay, so how do you get the damn thing off, right? Well, you got this screw right here on the clamp. You'll loosen that up. You'll give it a couple of twists as, as you're pulling back, and it comes off of the intake port there. So now you've got your carburetor off, right? So the cable goes in here, and in order to <clears throat> get into everything, we're going to remove the cap here. We're going to see the cable there. So you've got the cable. Let's see if I can manipulate this here and, and hold on to everything. And there we go. That's what's going on here. Um, so here's one that I've got pretty well taken apart. Okay, so basically when you open up your throttle, when you twist your throttle, you're opening it up. You can see that light. See, see the light in here? Basically that throttle slide is going up and down. Now what your carburetor does is you've got your gas line that goes in right here on this barb here. Your fuel line goes in right there. Carburetor bowl fills with gas, okay? Now it's got a float in it, and when the float reaches a certain level, it's basically a little plastic donut filled with air. It'll float, duh. That's why we call it the float, I guess, huh? So it then pushes against two little fingers, the arms here, and there's a little pin that it pushes up in here. Now the, the pin will block the flow of gas, which stops gas from going into the carburetor. So if you have fuel coming out of the air filter here, as well when it's doing that, it's running way too rich. And uh, that means odds are that we've got a problem here, probably some trash in there. It, it happens a lot, particularly with the newer bikes. Um, so that's how fuel gets into the carburetor. That's how it, it, the supply is maintained in the bowl. So what's going on? Now let's take the air filter off here. The carburetor... Its job is to give you that perfect air-fuel ratio, 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. That is ideal. Now, some of you may want to argue technicalities on me, but hey, I'm not interested, all right? 
So let's see here. So we're removing the air filter. So you're sucking air in here. You twist the throttle. Your throttle slide comes up, allows more air to enter the carburetor. Then what it does is your main jet is here, and then what, what we call the idle jet or whatever is here, this piece here. The needle goes into that hole in there. And as air is being sucked into the engine here, it has a siphoning effect. It sucks fuel into the jet. It's metered by this needle from barely cracking the throttle to three quarters throttle. And it atomizes the fuel, sucks it into the intake and goes boom, boom, boom. And you're running down the road. So if we have an air leak, you're not going to be getting the correct mixture. And if we have a leaky bowl here that's flooding out, we're not going to get the correct mixture. Now from the factory, they put a number 70 jet on the carburetor, and that's a little bit too rich. Um, you can get a jet kit here, and I'll put a link down below for the jet kit. It's a five millimeter jet kit. Uh, you want, they sell them like from a number 60 to a number 80. Gives you a full range. That should set anyone up for who wants to ride a little motorized uh, two-stroke here. You should be good from uh, basically the stock one. Like I said, most uh, stock engines run better with the number 66 jet and go up. So if you in, uh, improve your porting, give it a better uh, expansion chamber, a, a better exhaust on it and the like, you're changing the flow characteristics and you need to do a plug chop. And that's not today, but you'll, you, you'll need to change your jetting accordingly. So let's go on with the carburetor here. So it, it, air goes in, sucks fuel, air fuel goes into your intake here. So let's go ahead and take a little bit more look at, at how things work here. So we've got the throttle slide here, and I'm going to pull this spring up. Sorry about my fat finger here. Okay, the, the, the spring, if you loosen up the cable and, not, and un unscrew your cable adjuster here, and of course uh, loosen this part here on the throttle, screw that in all the way to the throttle, that'll give you a little bit more slack in your cable and it'll make it a lot easier to take the spring out. So I'm pulling up on the spring, the spring will come out of the slide. Now be careful, there's a washer in here. So we're going to pull this over and we're going to push down on the cable. Let's see if I can do that and let you see it. And the cable comes out. There's a little hole here in the bottom that your cable goes into and this little barrel end of the cable has to go fully in there to be properly seated and then the spring will go inside of the throttle slide here, the throttle body, throttle slide, to hold everything in place. But let's go ahead and take that out. Here we've got our spring and there's the little washer here. We've got the, the needle here and then we've got the slide, the throttle body. Now, we've got this little notched cut here, and that is where this screw right here, your idle adjustment screw, what it does is it pushes against, let me get my screwdriver I'm wanting, this slide here, and the more the screw goes in, the more the slide raises, that opens up, lets more air in, and that will increase your idle. This throttle slide assembly here, you have this cut in it, and that cut is for the cable. Now then, we've got the needle, and if you look real close on this needle here, You've got four notches in it. You've got the C-clip here, 
and you've got the four notches. From the factory, they put it on the third notch from the bottom. Now, what this does here, this meters the gas. This goes in and out of this brass piece here. The higher up this needle is, the more gas comes out. The more this is pushed down into that brass piece, the less fuel goes out. So if you raise the clip, that's going to push this down, which in turn is going to make less gas come out and that will make it run leaner. This comes into play when you're wanting to tune your bike and get it dialed in from low end to three quarters throttle. That's where your needle and this clip sets your, uh, your how rich it's going to be. So you can do a plug chop and uh, I'll have another video coming up on a plug chop. There's other videos on YouTube how to do a plug chop. But you'll do that and you'll see how you're running from say half throttle, you know, three quarters throttle and down. You want to mess with your needle here. But let's go on on the carburetor here. Okay, and here's the air filter here. You've got this plastic piece here, this great piece here that just holds the filter element in place. And if you use this here, I don't know, every once in a while you want to take it out, uh, you can hit it with some gas ring it out. Uh, you can hit it with some WD-40. I don't run an air filter in my bike. Um, you want to get the maximum amount of air into your carburetor, you can. A lot of people spend a lot of money on these expensive K&N air filters and all this stuff here to maximize airflow in. Well, back in the day, carburetors didn't have air filters in them. And then, of course, people started putting air filters on. If I had a $1,000 or a $10,000 engine, maybe I'd think more about running an air filter. But for years, motorcycles didn't have air filters in them. I've been running my bike for years open like this here, and I haven't had a problem. Uh, one option that, people can, that you can do is take your filter element out and drill you some holes in here. That'll let more air in. And then, of course, you put all this stuff back in if, if you're worried about, you know, oh, I'm going to destroy my engine. Well, put you some holes in here. That'll let, allow it to breathe a little bit better. Okay, so enough about that. <clears throat> so looking at the back end of this bad boy here, this is your choke lever here. So this little slide piece here has a hole drilled in it. And what that does is, is, well, this blocks the flow of air and lets just a very limited amount of air into your carburetor. And what that does is that forces more gas to come up and it makes a richer mixture, makes it easier for starting, as well easy to help get that engine warmed up. Now, another feature on this carburetor here is your primer button. Now some of these have just a solid brass cap and the newer ones have this. It kind of looks like a rivet to me. This plunger here pushes down on the float and helps flood it. That gets a little bit extra gas in it to start. We'll, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail on that once we get on the inside. Let me show you what we got on the inside of this bad boy here. You've got two screws that hold the bowl assembly together, the bowl onto it. And here's your second one here. Come on. So there's the float. And what the float does, the float as it rises, it pushes up on these two little fingers here. And the fingers, let's take the, this off here. You got this pin, you can easily take out the pair of pliers. Be careful when you remove your, your bowl, because I've had some of these just fall out. Then we can remove this here. And this little pin here 
is what blocks the flow of gas coming in and it just depends upon the the pressure of the rising float pushing up which raises this pin here so if you have any trash on this pin or any trash inside of here where your gas comes in you're going to have a basically that's what's going to cause it to flood out you're going to overfill your 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 carburetor bowl and you'll have the gas dripping scenario gas dripping out of your air gas dripping out of your air filter as well your bike uh, either a won't run or it'll run very bad so <clears throat> here is your primer button i push this in what that does is that forces the bowl when you press in on the primer button here, that forces the float down. That allows fuel to go in and flood the carburetor a little bit. So what I will do when I, a cold day or whatever, I'll turn my gas on, press this down, hold it down for about four or five seconds, do that once or twice. That floods lets a little bit more gas in, it makes it easier to start. Um, now one thing that I said, another problem that a lot of people have let's see, I'll go with this one here okay so we've got the clamp the clamp goes on and the clamp is what holds your carburetor secure on your intake manifold here on your intake port this here has a flange on the inside so this your exhaust I mean your, your intake goes in that far to where it, before it bottoms out if you only push it in halfway, you're going to be sucking air in on what these four. There's four cuts here that allow it to expand so you can get easier, makes it easier to get it on and off the, uh, the intake. But if you only push it in halfway, you're going to be sucking air in, in, in these cuts here. And A, either the bike won't start or it'll run like crap, um, depending upon how much air you're, you're getting in. So when you put your carburetor on for the first time or, or any time afterwards make note of how deep this is and make sure it's pushed that far in onto your intake and you should be good some people will put a rubber o-ring in there you don't need to do that okay that's just a waste of a rubber o-ring in my opinion set it push it on correctly you don't need to clamp this thing super tight just get it tight enough to where it's it, it secures a carburetor on and through vibration it's not going to turn and you're good to go I promise okay okay so we've covered everything let's see one other thing I, I want to talk about here is the choke here this here has a habit sometimes of coming loose either this little nut here or just wearing it out here to where you push your choke lever down you're riding and then it's vibrate it's vibrating and then this here goes down and your bike stops running on you okay so you can fix that by kind of scratching up this surface here and taking this nut off and bending this flap in just a little bit to where it makes a little bit more friction against this here and and tightening this up here so that that's a fix there Okay, so you've, we've got the carburetor apart. You want to make sure, if you are servicing your carburetor, one, that your gasket is in good shape here, that we don't have any residue or gum in here. Nope, let's not do that. Okay, now let's take a look at the jet. Okay? Now this is what controls three-quarter to full throttle. Stock they typically they'll, they'll put a number 70 jet on it and a stock engine uh, C level you're gonna run better with a number 66 jet here and the jet just unscrews there's the jet so number it's a five millimeter thread like I said you want to get you a jet kit here, five millimeter thread, number 60 to number 80 will give you all the range I'd say you'd need for your little motorized, your little two-stroke scooter there. And uh, as well, you can see through here, 
And like I said, this piece here is where the needle goes in and out of. So you can look right through here. I can see, if I put my eyeball here, I can see you, you can see me. Um, so when you're servicing your carburetor, you want to make sure that everything is clean here. You want to make sure that your gasket is in good shape. You want to make sure that your float isn't cracked and doesn't have any liquid in it, doesn't have any gas in it. If you got any gas in it, well, your float won't float, right? So let's go ahead and put this bad boy back together. Like I said, you want to make sure everything is clean. You don't want to go buggering up this hole here, but you could take a small piece of wire, I mean a super small piece of wire, and push in there to make sure that the, you don't have any gunk in it. You want to make sure that this piece here is clean too. So let's put the jet in. Just get it nice and snug. We don't need to prove our superhuman strength here. Okay, so let's get the pin here. We're going to push that pin into the notch there. Okay. That goes into the gas inlet. Going to push this pin Come on. Okay, so as long as this pin is, in, is, is fully inserted, you don't have a lot sticking it out on either side, you're good. Sometimes I've seen on these here that the pin's a little bit loose, has a little bit of wobble in it. Don't fret about it, because once you get your carburetor bowl in, the, the, the notch that's in your carburetor bowl, that's going to hold that pin in place. It's not going to go anywhere. Now, if your carburetor is leaking gas out of the air filter, the primer button, you know, you've cleaned it, one thing you can do to make sure that these that this thing is getting enough pressure to block the flow of gas from the factory what they recommend you do here is, is when this here is level it's 21 millimeters from remove the gasket from the, the bottom where the gasket is to the, the top of the float so you can ever so slightly bend these fingers to go ahead and, and accommodate that so you get your 21 millimeters. I've, I've just basically eyeball it. I'll put my finger here and bend it just a little bit down here and that, that'll make it uh, actuate this pin a little bit sooner and should solve any problems of it, of it flooding out. Uh, you want to make sure that your bowl is real clean here. Okay, we've got a little drain screw here. Sometimes if uh, your float is sticking, you can give your carburetor float bowl a few taps with a screwdriver. Um, you can take this screw out to, to bleed the gas out. Whoop. You've got the little notched area here. That corresponds where the pin is. That goes on. Let's put our two screws in. And I don't tighten it up, I, I slowly tighten them up equally. Got that one end where it's just snug. Get that one snug, and then we'll give it just a little bit more of a turn. We're good to go there. So now let's get the the cable into the throttle slide, push the cable through the holder, okay now with your throttle slide here, you've got this end here, 
which has the little beveled side here. And then you've got it where it's deeper on this other side here. Now the deeper side that goes up, that's where the spring goes in. So we're going to drop our needle into it. And this little Pac-Man guy here, this washer here, that little opening has to correspond with, with this cut here in the throttle body there. Put that on, and if it doesn't match up, what you can do is just pick up on the, the needle and give it a turn to where you're, you're lined up with the, the cut there. Okay, get my spring ready. Got the cable ready. We're going to put it in the bottom of the slide there. Get it in the groove. We've got the spring in. Everything looks good. Let's give it a little test here. Twist the throttle. And my throttle's a little bit wonky. There we go. We're good to go there. Now we've got the groove here where the cable goes into the throttle slide. You've got the, the barb here where your gas line goes in. Just behind it there, there's a little pin right here, and that goes in inside of the, the body of the carburetor. And what that does is that registers, that goes in where the slide is and keeps the slide from turning. So we push the slide in, may need to give it a little wiggle and you want to be careful to get this pin to seat into the where the jet goes into to it from the bottom you've got the got that everything goes down and you can see let's see if we can everything is working correctly you want to screw the, the cap on Make sure you get the cap all the way down, get it secure. Get it reasonably tight by hand. We don't want any air getting in there, and you definitely don't want to cross thread it. So now you can see I've got a lot of slop here in the cable. So we can unscrew. Oh. Hold the jam nut. Good Lord. Unscrew that. I got it most of the way out. Let's tighten this jam nut. Okay, now we've still got some play in the cable. We want to get that out if we can. So we have the cable adjuster here on this tube here. Let's unscrew this. The more we unscrew this, the less slop we have in the cable there. Put the jam nut against it. Tighten that up. We should be good to go. And you also can get a little bit of cheat and get a little bit of room here by unscrewing this a little bit from your throttle grip here, from the throttle assembly here that mounts on the handlebars. You don't want to unscrew it all the way because this is plastic and for, you know, integrity and, you know, make it sound in case it gets bumped or anything. If you just barely have it in there, it could break this here. So you want this pretty much in there. Uh, you don't want to over tighten this jam nut here. Basically, I'll just get it finger tight, as tight as I can get it with my finger, put a wrench on it and give it just that little bit to keep it secure. And when you wind up breaking your plastic assembly, check down below. I'll sell you an all-metal housing that works great on these guys here. So if you want, you can put your air filter back in it. Go tearing ass through the neighborhood. And hey, don't badmouth this carburetor. This is a good carburetor. I hope, hopefully I demystified the NT carburetor. Maybe you'll be a fan of the NT carburetor. You don't need to pay a bunch of money for those fancy smancy ones. And a lot of time people buy these, these uh, 
new carburetors thinking it's going to solve all their problems and it runs like crap because, well, they didn't jet it. So, uh, but n no shame in that game. We all got to learn. So uh, if you like my video, if I helped you out, give me a thumbs up. There's a button down there that says subscribe. I want to thank you for watching. Y'all come back now.